Me. And that's you. Hey, sure. everybody. <laughs> Hi, you are listening and watching Sipping Out the Cup on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our networks and channels and platforms. I'm Mike Morales here in sweltering San Antonio. That gentleman with the quarantine beard is? Is Matt Metris in Rochester, New York, hanging out in a new location. I'm down in my basement today. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, normally uh, when we record these, I have the house to myself, but no one, my family hasn't left the house in three months now. So uh... <laughs> <laughs> so now you're living in the basement. Hey, you are living the dream. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching this, we are, uh, this is the middle of May. However, when you're, when we're taping this, when you're watching this tonight, you may, it may be October, November, I'm not sure. We are going to taste and dissect Dano's Dangerous Tequila. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, I always, ha I always squirm a little bit when I hear the term dangerous anything. <laughs> yeah, right, you know? Yeah. <laughs> And when I saw this, I, we caught we got a hold of these folks on on Instagram. They, they're they're very uh, approachable. They you might have seen them on Instagram. Follow them on uh, on their Instagram. It's Dano's. It, they go by Dano's Tequila, I think, or Dano's Dangerous. But Dangerous has been has been eliminated here and there. Anyway, uh, we followed them, and um, the cool thing was that they were very uh, approachable, and and they have a really nice. Very nice, Very nice. Yeah. Classic uh, bottle, hand yep. numbered on the back. Yep. Uh, this is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to taste it first, and we're going to give you all the ins and outs and tell you whether it's worth tasting or not. Uh, but they, they um, uh, like I said, they were very approachable. This, uh, just to give you a quick insight, this is coming out of uh, Distillery 1507, and we'll name that distillery shortly. But right now I'm going to pour some of this Blanco tequila uh, into my Stasso Jarrito for tequila. And as you can see, it's very shiny. Yeah. How's, your light, how's your lighting in your basement? Uh, it's not as great as upstairs. I'm working on it, making a little Zoom studio. I'm not gonna get one of those ring lights, you know, that goes behind the computer. Oh for yeah, the, yeah. For all the TikTok stars. <laughs> I haven't broken down and gotten that yet. There's so, there's, there's all that stuff that I don't even wanna play with, you know, the Skype. <laughs> Skype has now uh, allowed us to have backgrounds and and um, I don't know if they work with or without, you know, like a, a green screen or a curtain. And and every time I put like agaves in a background and I bring up the bottle, the bottle disappears. My hands disappear. Yeah, mm -hmm. So I, I, I'd rather not screw with that. Um, anyway, the uh, this is really pristine. Yeah. It, it's, it's very pretty. Nice yeah. legs and tears. Absolutely. You know, it's just, there's nothing. Now, we just broke open the seal on these bottles, so we have not, I have, to be honest, I haven't had any. Um, now, this is not a slouch. It apparently won gold medal at the 2018 SIP Awards. So it's a it's an awarded, yeah. not, not that means anything to anybody, because the only, the only real award is the Brand of Promise Award. That's true, but, that's true. But, you know, uh, but it's very pretty, very, you know, looks like Mercury. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's nice. Yeah, so it's agave forward. Their their process is very interesting because it's very old school. Yeah, um, we'll tell you more about the story later on about how this this tequila came about. But apparently, um, Dano was a surfer, or yeah. was a surfer. Okay, at least that's the that's how the story goes, and that's not uncommon. There's a lot of surfer surfer dudes that that love tequila and. You know, I think uh, Peligroso was one of those. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, outdoorsmen that enjoy tequila because they they have either surfed or gone off road or something in Baja and they they, they just love it. So sure. this is very pleasant, very, yeah, very, nice. very sweet on the nose. Nice right vegetation. The, yeah. Right at the top, I got baked agave. There's a mm. reason for that, um, but it's just very brief. Wow, that's just uh, that's just all fruit. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready to try some. If you yeah, want. I was just gonna say I'm ready to get yeah, in there. Let's, let's do it. <clears throat> oh wow. <clears throat> hmm. 
Wow. Yeah. The sweetness doesn't carry over to the palate at all, but I get some warm agave, um, black pepper right on the front. Yep. Um, the sweetness is just just a little bit, but the full attack is on the on the palate. And what a finish! What yeah, a finish. I'm trying. There's something going on there that I can't place. Um, almost like a dried cherry or something, maybe like on the very back. Could could be. Um, <clears throat> wow, there is a full flavor. There's a lot mm -hmm. of body. It's good structure on this, this tequila. It's just full. It, you know, it's funny because the nose is very tame and, and it's very one-sided. You know, there was there mm -hmm. was fruit forward and, and very pleasant, almost floral, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but boy, when it when it went in, it went in like a tiger, man. Mm -hmm. Wow. All right. Well, let's let's give you this the, the Let's give you the ins and outs. Now, um, uh, I gotta say, I really like this. This what they've done with the um, with the label. Yeah, it's kind of uh, a little bit raised. The letters are a little raised and glossy, and you can see them actually in your camera. You can see them reflecting off the light. That's really cool with the agave on the top. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, this is um, the Blanco. Is at eighty proof. It's a distillery fifteen oh seven, and it is Casa de Reyes. Now, I, I was telling Matt off camera that when, when I lived in New Mexico and I, had, I was doing shows, this was years ago, there was an almond flavored tequila. And the reason I'm going to go, I'm going to tell you this story is because at the end, we actually, uh, these folks are, I guess, somewhere in the middle. These folks have it, a jalapeno pineapple, pineapple yeah. uh, tequila. And Dureus used to make, if this is the same distillery, and I can't tell because I, I um, it was an, they made an almond flavored tequila that people died for, okay? It was, it was not uh, the creamy, you know, cream tequila or anything like that. It was, it was tequila with infused almonds. At that time, the only, the only other flavored tequila you could get was Agavero from Cuervo, which was an acquired taste because it's all Damiana. Mm -hmm. um, which is super sweet if you haven't had it yeah it it's uh you gotta you gotta cut it with an ice cube because it's it's really sweet and they have an orange one now that that's been out for a long time anyway if this is the same distillery they really really know how to make infused tequilas but they start with this blanco that now uh matt do, do we they told us what the uh what the what the process was right on the on the on the blanco yes they're using a uh, a brick oven um, and one thing on their website, it said they're roasting for 26 hours, which I felt was a little bit on the short side uh, for, a, for a brick oven. Uh, and then there's a little bit of a, a question, right? So in their paperwork that they handed out or sent yeah. to us, uh, they just refer to it being milled. Um, on their website, they specifically say that they use a Tejona. Um, oh, no kidding. Which is interesting because you would think that they would emphasize that a little more um you know but well you know i would yeah, yeah. i i would too <laughs> but yeah so they say they use it at tahona uh and then uh double distilled in copper stills yeah so uh so this is an old school tequila regard i can tell you right now i don't i don't taste tahona very very sometimes you can if you've had enough of these tequilas that have a that are made with a tahona and there are very few of them they don't all taste like uh, like Fortaleza, um, and some people are put off by that minerality. There, there's a there's an extra layer of flavor that that uh, that a Taona, which is a, a, a crushing a, a stone crusher, uh, leaves on the agave. It leaves a nice. Um, it's an extra layer of flavor. It leaves a lot of character, and it, it it has its own character that that you can tell. Um, you don't often taste it very much on like suerte. Suerte, for instance, has it makes it with a taona. So does siete leguas, um, but siete leguas is a blend. It's taona and, and shredded, so it so it kind of uh, blends a little bit more. But uh, regardless of whether this is shredded or 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 just crushed, I'm really liking this blanco. Yeah, this is, me too. 
this is a really good old fashioned tequila. Absolutely. And uh, they're at selling it on their website. They're at forty eight dollars on the Blanco. Wow. Well, this is a that's a little that's that's up there. Yeah, it's mid market. It's mid market. Yeah. Um, so I know that at, at this time, as I said, we're we're in the middle of May. We've been quarantined for like three months. You know, I think it's actually March ninety third today. <laughs> yeah, not more. Yeah, I know. It's uh, was it uh, what do we what do we call these these? I think it's Mayuary or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know, so by the time you folks see this, it could be November, it could be December because we're booked out. I mean, regardless of what's going on in the world right now, people are still launching their tequila. These things have been in the works uh, for, well, this one is, has been out for a while, but they're just now breaking out into the market, uh, into other markets. But, you know, there are brands that are, they have to launch in June and July. That's just part of the marketing process. They can't stop it. It's a train. It's a bus that's moving. So, you know, regardless of what's going on, um, we're getting a lot of these tequilas. And um, I got to tell you, man, this one... I'm really enjoying this one. I, I, I like where they're headed with this. Um, I think it's important that they show that, that, you know, that they're, um, that they're doing it the right way. They're doing it the old fashioned way because they have an infused tequila that we're going to get to here shortly. Um, I know that, that restaurants are beginning to open up, Matt. What, what do you think? Do you think this is something that, that would, would this tequila be something that you would be uh, okay with as far as serving and, and having in the, in the repertoire and the, in yeah. the absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it is a good mid market, uh, tequila. You're not going to see it in, in cocktails at that price. Um, but it's, it stands on its own as a sipper. So yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Well, in that case, we'll go out on a limb and go brand of promise nominee for the, it's the Blanco in the Blanco category. I thought you had it on your on your phone. I did. Oh yeah. <laughs> He's Matt went all out and downloaded the uh, the the Brand of Promise nominee badge. For those of you who are listening to me, you don't see this, but I have a paddle, which is basically <laughs> just a it's a <laughs> coaster it's a, with a popsicle. It's a stick. coaster with a with an ice cream stick, and I look like I'm on um I look like I'm in an auction. <laughs> you know, sold to the man with the gold paddle. Right. Uh, so stick with us. That's our take on Dano's Dangerous Tequila. But we're going to go through the whole entire line of Dano's and see how dangerous it really is. Uh, and give you a little bit more on the background and uh, maybe some more on the pricing. But uh, I, I like it. I like where they're headed. I like that they're doing the old-fashioned, um, that they that they source this distillery. I don't know how many other brands are coming out of this distillery. I don't know if you have a, a known... A not known... many. Uh, I looked at the gnome list earlier. There's like three or four, maybe. There's not a lot coming oh, out. Oh, wow. It's a handful. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, apparently, Dano or Daniel or whoever this, this gentleman is, is uh, a former surfer. Or maybe he is still a surfer. I'm not sure. That's... It's not uncommon to, ha to have guys who are surfers and off-road racers and ski skate, you know, uh, skateboarders and and uh, uh, all those guys love this love tequila. So it's not uncommon to have one of these, you know, several of these come out. I, I I've never heard of the guy, but I have heard now of the tequila, and I like it. So. Brandon yeah, Promise nominee. That's our take on the Blanco, but stick with us. We're going to go through the entire line. I'm Mike Morales here in San Antonio. That gentleman is Matt Metris in Rochester, New York. You have been watching and listening to Sipping Off the Cuff on Tequila Aficionado Media on all of our channels and networks. Please subscribe down below if you're watching us on YouTube. Hit that red button. Hit the notification bell because every time that we upload a video, which now is every other day on every week, and when Matt when we upload Matt's video, you'll get the ding right there on your phone. You'll be able to watch Matt in, in all his basement glory. <laughs> <laughs> but that's our take. Uh, and whatever you do, hey, tomar sabiamente. Sip wisely. <laughs>